Hello, today we're going to demonstrate a lab we call cell size efficiency. It's also known as the Jello Jigglers Lab. I want to put on my safety goggles, which fit comfortably over my eyeglasses so that I can protect my face. Real cells are very tiny, they're microscopic. We needed to pick a substance that would work well to model the texture of a cell. Enter auger. Auger is a rock star in the biology lab. Auger is powdered seaweed oh, that you can mix with water and heat up and then you pour it into a mold and you can make any shape you want like this teensy tiny little cube. Oh, this little baby cell, it's so sweet. Now what we can do with this is we can put other substances in it. Like we can put colored indicators, we can stick salt in it and we used an indicator that's called phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein. How do we spell phenolphthalein? That's crazy, that's a long word, but phenolphthalein, that will turn pink in the presence of a base like sodium hydroxide, N-A-O-H. So if we have these cells, and we mix them with sodium hydroxide, our jello jiggler cells will turn pink, beautiful pink. We're gonna test cells of various sizes. Uh, for our experimental groups, we're gonna use one cell that is a three centimeter by three center by three centimeter cube, one that is a two centimeter by two center by two centimeter cube, and one that is a one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter cube. And we're going to uh, expose those to our nutrient, in this case, NaOH, to see if there's a color change. Now, uh, now in order to, uh, to make sure that um, our experimental groups are uh, of very precise nature, we gotta make sure that we measure uh, very accurately. So using a small ruler, we're gonna place the ruler on our cubes and measure precisely three centimeters and, and trim the cube using a scalpel. Uh, whenever you're using a scalpel, you got to be very, very careful. It's super sharp. It could definitely cut through skin. Okay. All right. Just trim it a little bit off. And then I would have to flip the cube the other way, take another measurement, and again, trim it again just a little bit because these larger cubes are just about the right size to start. And then in the third dimension, one more measurement, one more cut to get our accurate measurement for the cube. Again, notice my fingers are away from the blade um, so that I can make a nice cut and be safe. So ultimately, this is what we're going to end up with after you cut for the three size cubes. Hi, Lucas here. They made me sit down because I'm kind of tall, so I wasn't being cut out of the camera there. So uh, we're going to take the data on this part right now. Remember, these are the three uh, phenolphthalein cubes. I'm actually going to put them all in the same beaker right now. One, two, three. The only important thing here is that uh, they all sit on the bottom. Notice, because I don't want to stack them. Because when I pour this sodium hydroxide, notice I have a beaker not straight from the stock solution. We don't want to ever do that. Right, so I've got the sodium hydroxide here. As long as it's covering all three cells, then we're good. Before I do that, since I'm using chemicals, I want to make sure I got my eyes on. I don't want to lose any safety points for them random safety checks that we like to do. So here we go. We're just going to pour this over and watch the magic magenta come out. So we set a timer for 10 minutes and our 10 minutes is about up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the cubes out of the NaOH. So I'm going to use this disposable spoon to get them out because I don't want anything getting on my hand. And I got a two for one deal there. Okay, and here is my third one. And before I do anything else, I'm just going to blot them dry a little bit so I don't have the liquid going anywhere. Isn't that a gorgeous color? 
So what I'm going to do now to look at our data is we need to chop these cubes in half, just like a little guillotine. So for this first one here, my three by three by three, I'm gonna take my scalpel and go straight down the middle. And I'm going to do that for all three of my cubes. And we can see that the insides are white and we're going to take a look at our data now. So I have nice magenta color on the outsides of my cube and white in the center. So what this tells me is that the nutrients were able to get into the cell. We are going to measure in millimeters how far the nutrients came in. So if I measure on the metric, so I'm measuring millimeters, it is about five millimeters into the cell. And that's the same no matter what size, what side of the cube I go on. If I go to my smaller cube, it is also five millimeters into, or 0.5 millimeters into the cell. So we have, it looks like a little bit smaller white in the center, but that's just because the cubes are different sizes. The last one, the tiniest one, is kind of tricky. It looks just like one, but we have to remember that the magenta color is coming in from both sides. So the way I could think about it is one divided by two, so each half would give me 0.5. So all of the cubes had the same measurement, and even though it looks different, it is still that same measurement. Hi, Lucas here again. They let me stand up this time, so I'm going to explain the site part two to you right now. The last part of the experiment was about absorption of nutrients. There's another thing that cells have to do, and that is they have to produce waste, and they have to get rid of that waste. A small cell is not going to produce that much waste. This one has more waste to produce, and this one has the most waste it's going to produce. Look at that. And we'll talk later about volume and surface area uh, concepts of a cell. But for right now, let's just test them. Right now, what I have is these uh, cubes are made of salt. Good old NaCl right there. And I'm going to grab my, uh, my goggles again because I am dealing with chemicals. I've got three beakers with equal amounts of regular tap water. And these cubes are made of salt. Whenever I put the salt cube into the water, obviously the water becomes salt water. Some of you that are good at chemistry know that salt water is more uh, higher electrical conductivity. So I've set up a bunch of technical stuff here to basically measure the conductivity of the water. And I'm going to show you what it's like to measure that for about two minutes at a time. I'll put my glasses on here. I'll start with the big cube right here. I'll drop this in the water and I'll immediately press the uh, go button on the uh, logger pro over there is what we call it. Go ahead and press that. I'm going to collect and you'll see data start to form. I'm gently mixing the cube in the water and notice as the salt comes out of the cube and into the water, the water itself becomes more conductible. The conductivity of the water is increasing in general over time there. And we would normally let that run for about two minutes. I'm going to pull up another graph from the, from the past that shows you what this would look like theoretically when this is all over. Again, I would use a fresh beaker of water for the medium and a fresh beaker of water for the small because this will already have salt in it. I want to start with the same amount of salt, which is basically zero. And I'll show you what that looks like on a nicely produced graph from somebody last year. You can see the red is the small cube that produced a little bit of salt. There's a slope of 1.3, I'm sorry, 1.9 on that, on that uh, line, the red line. The blue line is the medium one with a slope of 5.8, and the green one is the large cube with a slope of 12.4. You may think the large one wins, but we're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. Remember to wash all of your glassware and wash your hands.
And Mr. Pingor's shirt is the color of the phenolphthalein. Ta-da! <laughs>